This is the Apertura Carbon Star 200, a Newtonian astrophotography telescope with clever upgrades and optimizations across the board. While I'm a pretty diehard refractor guy, this mirrored beast has opened my eyes to the many advantages of its design, with a few quirks you need to know about. High Point Scientific sent me the scope for a review about a month ago, and it's time to let you know what I think. Welcome to the Astro Backyard. First things first, this is an F4 telescope with a focal length of 800 millimeters. This is considered fast in terms of light gathering ability and sits in the mid range of magnification and field of view. Unless you're a compact refractor lover like me and then 800 millimeters feels crazy deep. Here's an image I took of the Western Veil Nebula to give you a better idea of what to expect. See that glorious diffraction spike in there? We'll get to that. Now the field of view you will get will depend of course on the camera you attached. And I have good news for you. The Carbon Star 200 is a perfect match for the ASI 533 and the 2600. If you own either of these camera sensors in any brand, this OTA provides the perfect image scale. The image will be crisp with beautiful round stars. The Carbon Star line offers dedicated coma correctors for both the 150 and the 200 millimeter versions. For the 200 I'm using, it's a one-to-one -one corrector, retaining the 800 millimeter at f4. With the corrector in place, the star quality is perfect across an APS-C sensor field. I captured round stars edge to edge when using the 2600 MC Pro and MM Pro. This is an optional accessory I definitely recommend you get if you're using a crop sensor, but you could probably get away without it if you're shooting with the 533. There are 13 knife edge baffles inside the optical tube. This helps to produce images with better contrast and is less susceptible to stray light. They included a rear cap for further light leak prevention as well, but you're definitely going to want to use a simple dew shield if you image in the backyard. I forgot to put one on while pointing near my garage and some red light snuck into my first few subs. Lesson learned. High Point sent their matching Carbon Star dew shield, but I don't think it's available yet, so no idea on the price. Now this is a Newtonian reflector, and you know what that means. Collimation. Do yourself a massive favor and pick up a simple laser collimator to align the mirrors before you start your session. The process involves using an Allen key to first adjust the secondary mirror so the red light is centered on the primary. Then a couple of slight tweaks to the adjustment knobs on the primary mirror until the red light is centered in the bullseye. Honestly, it's pretty painless and I do this before every session and after a meridian flip. In terms of rigging this thing up for astrophotography, the telescope comes with a small mounting bracket for a guide scope. A mini 32 millimeter guide scope works fine with this scope and you should be able to balance the load no problem. I've mainly been using the Carbon Star 200 with the 2600 MC Air, which is a match made in heaven. The camera has a duo sensor design so I can image and auto guide through the primary scope. It also includes an ASI Air to control the mount plate solve and automate the entire session. This is how the entire kit looks when it's rigged up. I just love how simple it is. The OTA only weighs 15 pounds, so I can pick the whole thing up and carefully lug it in and out of the garage. The scope is a great fit for any mid-range equatorial mount like the AM5, and you could even use it on the AM3 or the Skywatcher Wave 100. Due to weather, I'm forced to complete a lot of projects using just one full night of image data. This means that I really need to make those subs count, and a telescope like this, a fast newt, really helps me do that. Every three to five minute exposure is coming through a big eight inch aperture at F4. That's a lot of starlight. And I'm noticing that difference when I process the images. I'm still getting used to those diffraction spikes in the stars. While I love the big ones that glimmer on the brightest stars, the medium sized ones throughout the frame are less appealing to me. I've found that reducing the star size across the image really helps draw more attention to my subject. I mean, there's nothing new there. We've been doing that for a long time. Let's take a closer look at some of the images I've taken. This is the Veil Nebula, the Western Veil or Witch's Broom. You can see that beautiful diffraction star spike in the central star there, which I love. So this is the field of view with the carbon star and a crop sensor camera, the 2600 MC Air I used here with the Optolong L-Extreme filter. So you can see the stars look great across the edge of the 
at the edges of the frame. Everything looks good there. Again, this is a stack. This is about four hours here. If we're just cruising around the edges. So, uh, you know, no uh, gradient exterminator, anything done to the image yet. This is just the straight stack. If you wanna see the blink of these image frames, you can just play it through here. You can see as I did the Meridian flip and it really didn't lose focus throughout the night. I was kind of surprised about that. I'm not using an autofocuser, but the star size stayed pretty well the same uh, without any adjustments over about a four hour period. So I don't know if that's due to the carbon fiber materials used or what, but that was a nice surprise. I thought I'd have to refocus a lot more. Uh, another project I shot was the Cave Nebula. Again, with that 2600 MC Air and the Optolong L Extreme. That's what the raw stack looks like there. So a pretty exciting image there. A little less intense than the veil, but a cool object nonetheless. And then here is uh, some RGB data. So this is through RGB filters in uh, 20, 120 second exposures, just combined to get the natural star colors in the cave nebula. So everything looks good there. And you can see that the, you know, across a crop sensor camera, the, the field illumination is great with the, with the Carbon Star 200. If we hop over to Stellarium, I can show you the field of view you'll get with the Carbon Star and, and a crop sensor camera. So with Andromeda coming up soon, that's a popular target for August and September. It's gonna have to be a two panel mosaic with this telescope and a crop sensor. Uh, you can see at 800 millimeters, you'd have to do one side and then the other. You know, Andromeda is a huge target. Other things like, uh, you know, the Pac-Man Nebula over here would be a great fit at 800 millimeters. The Lagoon Nebula, I believe, will fit in this field of view. If we hop over here, and just rotate it a bit. Yeah, so the Lagoon Nebula would be a good choice for the Carbon Star. You can get that before it's gone this summer, the Trifid. So 800, pretty practical focal length with this crop sensor camera. So hopefully it's useful to you to see uh, some of the raw data captured with this system. If clear nights aren't common where you live, a big light bucket like this makes sense. I'd love to soak 40 hours into an astro project, but it's just not possible weather-wise from my location. While I've explored using some reflector telescopes before, including a really big one, I fell back into my comfort zone shooting almost exclusively with refractors here in my backyard. They're still my favorite telescope type, but to take my images to the next level, I need to focus on gathering as much light as I can on a single night. A fast eight inch aperture allows me to pour on the starlight and attempt some new, more challenging projects. I don't have to change my routine and the cameras I'm already using complement this system. If I have the opportunity, I'll keep using this telescope into the fall and winter on those longer cold nights to see what I can create. Thanks again to High Point for letting me take the Carbon Star for a test drive. And until next time, clear skies. Oh, 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 oh,